this mass for the special intentions of Alphonse and Georgette Cordier. And we also pray in special way for the eternal repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially those who are victims of the 9-11 attack in the United States. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear friends, and the brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, oh God. and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Show pay more, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, we may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I pro proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is led on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this on my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that is my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I may win more of them. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it for this, all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win it. Athletes exercise self-control in all things, they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we are we an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly, nor do I box as though beating the air, but I punish my body and slave it, so that after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. My soul longs, indeed, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh shake for joy to the living God. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, mighty God. Even the sparrow finds a home and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. O Lord, you be your Lord, my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose hearts are the highways to Zion. 
For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, your word, O Lord, is true, make us holy in your truth, hallelujah. The Lord be with you, and your spirit, every day, from the Holy Gospel, according to you. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? will not most fall into a pit. A disciple is not above a teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like a teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the gap in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye? When you yourself do not see the law in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, my friends. You know what? Our responsible son is telling us this morning that heaven is a beautiful place. We are coming here this morning because the longing of our soul is to reside there someday. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Mighty God. Heaven is a beautiful place, is a lovely place. Our soul is always longing to be there. However, there are things that, so to say, disqualify us to be in heaven. St. Paul says in our first reading, it will disqualify us when we do things out of omission, not out of the will of God. And you know, we are reminded in our first reading, St. Paul says that the gospel is free of choice. That the proclamation, the kingdom of God, is not for sale. The kingdom of God is not for say. We are reminded today that like St. Paul, we have to be on to all. Be on to all. In our gospel, you know, one of the basic thing, and I think this is one of the, the problem that does not merit us or disqualify us to be in heaven is the problem of being judgmental. No? Being judgmental. And we are warned about being judgmental. The gospel says, take love first. Uh, take the uh, First take the lamp out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to, to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. One of the problem of the church right now is this what we call hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. And here, the gospel says, hypocrite, 
is the one who correct others but fail to see their own mistakes. Not to correct others but there is a failure of acknowledging their own mistakes. You know, human as we are, we always have the tendency to, to it's easier to spot, you know, the flaws, the mistakes of others, but sometimes we refuse to admit our own mistakes. In the Gospel, it says, that's hypocrisy. We are so, so quick to point out an accusing finger, yet we don't have the courage and humility to point the same accusing finger to ourselves. But the friends, my brothers and sisters, if we judge and criticize others, it means we are avoiding some truth about ourselves. The challenge for today in order to be part of that beautiful dwelling place is let us be, you know, using the analogy in the gospel, in the other gospel, let us not be a wolf in a sheep's clothing. Let us not be a wolf in a sheep's clothing. Before we criticize and before we, we judge others, let us make sure that we are like immaculate, that we are like flawless. Because we cannot, <laughs> if we are blind, we cannot guide another blind or else. That's a disaster. Today, we are challenged to be aware of our shortcomings. We are challenged to be aware of our personal loopholes before we judge others. Instead of judging, instead of criticizing, find ways to help. Examine ourselves. Look at ourselves before the mirror. Friends, my dear brothers and sisters, today, remove first the dirt within. We have our dirt within. We have our virus within. Sanitize first our hearts before we can sanitize the hands of others. Clean first ourselves. Remove the dirt within us rather than being busy attacking the devil in others. Mother Teresa of Calcutta says, If you judge people, you don't have time to love them. If you judge people, you don't have the time to, judge, to love them. Today, what we need today is not condemnation. We condemn people, we judge them, we criticize them. What we need today is not condemnation, but compassion. Be careful to condemn people. Why? Because, who knows, we are the first one to be condemned. That's why today, let us be a boy of being a blind guide. In my reflection in the social media, I, I told her we have to check our spec. Check the spec. And this is the challenge for you and for me. We have to avoid being hypocrites. And that is, we have to be true to ourselves. Have a check of ourselves first before we criticize people. Heaven are the place, heaven is a place for those who are really real. Hypocrites don't have a place in there. Today, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, like St. Paul, we have to do things out of the will of God, not out of commission. Because the kingdom of God is not for business. The kingdom of God is free of charge. We will ask for this grace today. 
that the Lord may give us the grace to be honest enough. The Lord may give us the grace that we have a purity of heart so that we will not be a blind guide guiding other blind. And the friends and the brothers and sisters, first take the back out of your own eye and then we will see clearly to take the speck out of our neighbor's eye. And always remember, heaven is a beautiful place. Long for that, desire for that, and avoid being one among the hypocrites. By words and works, Jesus taught us the forgiving mercy of God, which seeks to save and not to condemn. May we follow this example as we pray to the Father, and in a repetition, let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may undertake the road that leads to forgiveness, justice, truth, and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear that honest and lowly citizens may not be misled by false and ambitious leaders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear that we may refrain from passing judgments on or condemning other people on account of their weaknesses and shortcomings, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear that the sin we experience the forgiving love and healing of our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the dead, especially the soul of Geoffrey McKean, and those who are victims of the bombings in the United States, are remembering the 9 11 attack, obtain mercy before the judgment seat of God. We pray to the Lord. And now in silence, we close our eyes and bow our heads and present to the Lord our personal intentions. Lord, open the eyes of all people who have lost their way in life. By your grace, lead us back to you who loves everyone. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Please stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. O God, in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion, bearing offerings on the law, except we pray the sacrifice from your faithful servants, so that and make it holy, I should bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just to our children and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises have nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord and so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and we join, we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy. <coughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the Son of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed, and after bidding me to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you on it of him, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from me, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, all our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the night of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have patient throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant us in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Love of God, you the name of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The 
body of Christ. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have endured with heavenly miseries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer against coronavirus. Almighty and merciful Father, we thank you for the life that is your gift, for the providence that sustains us, and for your wisdom that directs the course of our days. Forgive our sins against your love, against each other, and against your creation. The threat of an infection of coronavirus is upon us today. This disease causes fear among us and pain. We have the very loving Father to deliver us from this and other diseases. Heal those who are affected. Stop the spread of the virus. Strengthen us in charity to care for each other. We ask this, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. What God, forever and Thank you for coming this morning, and we are reminded today do things not out of commission, do things not out of distance, because the kingdom of God is not for sale. Second, always long, always desire for heaven. Because it is a beautiful and lovely dwelling place. And third, there are things that disqualify us to be in heaven, and that is our hypocrisy. We are not judges. We are not here to judge others. But we are here be like a custodian, like a janitor. And that is, we have to clean ourselves first before judging other people. What we need today is compassion, not condemnation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is said that, go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Amen.